Hi, I'm Maureen Marsden and I used to run a play group in Fatfield in the Miners' Welfare Hall way back in the early 70s. Hello, I'm Rosemary Muncaster. I did the social services play group at the same time. Hello, I'm Lily Nicard and I did Washington Village play group at around about the same time. My name's Joan Britton. I did a play group in Blackfell in the uh, early 80s. And then I I was involved with Bridge when they started up. Hello, I'm Sue Oliver. I was um, helping out at Domwell Village um, play group and got involved through that with the PPA in in Washington. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, It's Maureen again. I started my play group with my friend Brenda Walker and... Our hall was the, a big old hall with a sprung floor, all polished, highly polished. And the biggest nightmare we had was our caretaker because he was petrified that we were going to put sand or water or anything on his beautiful floor. And we always had to be out by 12 o'clock because the balls came in after us. So initially it was like walking on eggshells when we were set, setting up. Um, but what we did, we had a beautiful big hall um, and... Unlike a lot of others in Washington, and there were 13 other playgroups, 13 villages in Washington, each had a playgroup, because we all were in different premises, some were church halls, some were community centres, so we were, it was very different for everybody else. So this is my story, but others might be slightly different. Um, and we set our playgroup up, really, and supported by the Washington Development Officers, because they were really keen to get some help for the new families that were moving into Washington. Because these new families were very young new families and very different to the population that was in Washington before because we tended to be middle-aged and older people. And a lot of these young families came and they were dropped in to the new village and didn't have their mams and their aunties and their grandmas and their friends to help them. And so the playgroup became their lifeline. And that was what the development workers were hoping would happen. And it did. Um, Some of the young people also were single parent families. Um, There was a lot of work in Washington Newtown. So a lot of the young families, the men were out working. Some ladies, although not technically a single parent, were single because there was nobody there at all to help them during the day or or a night shift. But there were a lot of very young single ladies with their their children. Most of the playgroups would probably open about half past nine in the morning till half past eleven. And I think most all of us took children who were two and a half-ish up till school age. And that something in my memory goes back to that was the ratio we had to have uh, adults and and children. Normally there were probably one or two playgroup leaders there, um, but we were all supported by the mums as well. We couldn't have worked if we didn't have the mums as volunteers. And we had rotors so that they could have time off the same as we did. And I think my playgroup, we worked on four mornings a week. And I think I I led one, something like a Tuesday and a Thursday, and Brenda would take the... Wednesday and the Friday. So I think that's what my memory's telling me anyway. Um, but again, it, it could be different in other, in other play groups. Um, as well as getting a chance to play with the children, um, their own children as well as other children, the mums also learnt new play activities, things that maybe they'd never encountered in, in their younger days as well. Um, and I'm thinking like playing with paint and Play-Doh and water. Um, and they also had a chance to make some new friends, which was that very vital link that they all needed. And they could talk about their concerns. And and, it, and in turn, all of that helped to build their confidence. But it wasn't just a one way, because I think it built my confidence as well. Um, and we were all new at this game. We hadn't done it before. Um and so we were all learning and that was so rich and it was so good and we had lots of laughs. Might have had a few tears when we got home, but we also had a good good few laughs. Um, and it's something that's shaped 
my life over the, for the last 50 years. Can I hand over to you, Lily, so you could maybe tell us about what, a, what your playgroup did? Um, well, I've written out everything that we... We did an organised group because we liked everything to run smoothly. So prior to them coming in, we used to go and set tables out so and chairs so they could sit round in groups of four with one. It had to be an adult as well. So we did the same as in Maureen's and we had the parents on a regular rotor and always said, if you can't turn up, please contact us because then we need to find somebody else. So we used to start ourselves, you know, about half eight, nine o'clock for the children to come in, come in with their mums at 9.30. The, we then registered them in and the parents were given, you know, if they wanted to take the coats off and settle the children, fair enough. But we were prepared to do that if they wanted to go straight off. So we left it very much up to the parents, which were nearly always female, but often we get a, got a male coming along. And the males used to be very interested in getting their hands into the door and mm, things yeah. like that. So we just encouraged this and it made the children feel better. So after registration and their coats off, we used to get the children at the table. On the table, we had building bricks, jigsaws, crayons. Every table was separate and then you could move your table if you wanted to do something different. We did clay, which we just, well, was flour and water, which was quite messy, but the kids loved it. Um, painting, then we had little picture books so that they could sit quietly and just look at the pictures if they wanted. After this, which was usually about half an hour, um, we used to join together for games in the centre of the room, Ring of Roses, the farmer wants a wife, that sort of thing. And the children eventually <laughs> were quite excited, so we then sat them down, had our drinks and a biscuit to calm them down. And then at the end of that, while they were all calm, we sat and told them a story. Sat them on the seats. We were very lucky that when we went into the village hall, there was a bit of money available, so we were able to get tables and chairs through them. So children sit down, listen to the story. We talk about it, let them ask questions. And then we sat them all in a circle and we used to sing songs. Anything that came to mind, if it was one that was actually on the television, we would attempt that as well. And at 11.30, that was it. Parents came and, you know, it was our day over. But we got a lot out of it. We had to put a lot into it. But then you had children that didn't play with other children or didn't play with dough in the house because Mammy was afraid mm -hmm. in case it got on the carpet or something like that. And we were lucky in as much as we had a cleaner, he used to say, just tidy your stuff away, I'll wash it after you've gone. So that was our day. And we did it four days a week as well, mm -hmm. four That's mornings. Fantastic. Well, you were dead lucky when you said you got the money, <laughs> so, because we didn't have money. I can't remember getting very well, much money. Yes. And, see, but what I do remember, can you remember through the, 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 the baker's boards? Yeah. And to make our bookcase and we used to stand them upright and put curtain wire across yes, the sides to keep the books in. Mm -hmm. Did were you the same? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you all had your book corner. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. good. Washington okay. Development so, did have a system where some people, anybody could come and get twenty five pound. We're given twenty five pound to help them start off. Mm -hmm. And in them days twenty five pound was quite a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It sounds ridiculous that. now, doesn't it? Oh, I know. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. And the play doh, we made our play doh, didn't we? Out we of did. Flour, flour and salt and <laughs> water. <laughs> yes. um, and, and you gave the recipes out because the mums used to want to do it at home. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have to do that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a cheap alternative, wasn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. And the, the one 
painting that our kids love to do was the butterfly. Can you remember the butterfly? Yes. Oh, yes. Where you put your paper in half and then you put blobs and then you squashed the gooey yeah. paint <laughs> and then opened it up. Oh, I love doing that one. I put oil on and, and blue with wind. a straw yeah. and made lovely patterns and then put the paper on. Yeah. That and was, um, they enjoyed those, doing that. Those yeah. handprint ones. Oh, yes. Yeah. One of them yes. used to lie down and all the others went round them with. Hands and and their feet. <laughs> Children have never had their feet painted. They would <laughs> paint their feet and would walk along the wallpaper. <laughs> Just telling Lily and Rosemary, one of our favourites, was to get put them put their hand on and draw around the hand. Mm -hmm. And we did have some scissors to learn them to teach them how to cut. And then we cut them out. And if you you then place them and they look like hedgehogs That's right. and we put hands on top of each other so you got the hedgehogs. That was our favourite autumn mm -hmm. one to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he used to take turns, didn't he, with um, everyone sort of coming up with new ideas and that got quite competitive, really. And um, you had to wait from the PPA. People would show off something that had gone mm -hmm. really well didn't they? at the meetings and you would go back and give that a go mm -hmm. and uh, then somebody else would come up with something else. So if you went out and about and you saw something, and then you brought it back and we all had to go copy in it. Yes. I mean, some of the songs we sang, going back to what Lily said about the television, were new to us. I mean, it was the first time I'd ever um, done the, the wheels on the bus. It was my yes. favourite. <laughs> um, and, but, and I'm a little teapot. Mm -hmm. Can you remember that one? Mm -hmm. But the one that brought the mums, I think a lot of them actually knew it was the hokey cokey. Oh, yes, you remember doing the hokey cokey? But the mums yes. must have done that. With their families, because that's an old, an yes. old one. Mm -hmm. So we, it was like, it was good they actually. They loved doing that. They, 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 they loved, loved the hokey. Loved hokey. Oh, the kids loved the hokey, oh, hokey yeah. as well. Oh, oh, it was truly brilliant. Mm -hmm. My social service, I did a social services play, but what happened in Washington, the Sunderland um, Council decided to send all these one-parent families and put them in Sulgrave flats all by themselves. They had no no help at all, nobody to um, give them advice. So social services stepped in and, and with, they did a play group, which was entirely different to the one Lily, Maureen and everybody's talking about. In that play group, the, 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 fa the mothers had to stay because the, the social services were working with the mothers. So while I was playing with the children and, and, my help, and the helpers, Social services I have three social workers working with the mothers and and that was so very important, you know. So um our playgroup was different to the ordinary playgroups. But, but the mothers got a lot out of it. But I never found out if if we did any good. <laughs> I just hoped we did. <laughs> I'm sure we did. I'm sure we did. Um once all of the playgroups in, in Washington had got established and we were running we were all keen to meet each other because we knew it was happening in different mm. villages, mm. but we had to find a way so that we could get together and, and share our experiences and share our concerns, happiness, mm. whatever it might be. And so we, um, again, with the help of the Washington Development Workers, we came together and formed the Washington Playgroups Association. It wasn't the PPA, it was the Washington <coughs> Playgroups Association. And we were offered an office in the Elms up in Concord. It was upstairs and the window and the room faced the main road. Remember that? It'd be a bay window. Um, but with that was really important because we got an address and we got a telephone number. Yeah. And so we weren't invisible anymore. We became very visible. It gave us all structure. It gives a whole structure and we used to have regular monthly meetings where... Anybody from the plague, volunteers, leaders, mm -hmm. could come along and share mm -hmm. with us um, and our, our thoughts for the future because mm -hmm. we were growing and it was it was a happy time to be there to see that. Concerns about money yeah. always there, that and never goes away. Help with insurance, difficult mm -hmm. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and all the legislation that was coming in about mm -hmm. keeping health and safety issues going. It, it became a, a really... Yeah. Little buzzy place to be mm -hmm. in, and um, with costs, with supplies, mm -hmm. decent paintbrushes. Because if you bought in bulk, the better ones. Mm -hmm. um, all the all the play groups got the, that equipment at a, a reduced price. Yeah, we used to go around and collect um, paper books. You know, little samples to buy your new wallpaper. Those great big heavy books. We had loads of them upstairs, and I remember making trips to the Sunland Depot 
to get the ends of their print roll. And so we had lots of paper upstairs as well. We used to get ours from um, up at on, on, uh, Emerson. Uh, Emerson Crowther. Crowther. Right. Crowther. There was a place there where, where they did the end of rolls as yeah. well. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and the little things like that were... So we were always eager to share where yeah. we got where we had contacts because it was always good. And then, then we started getting speakers in as well. We did. And then that was a big success. And the reverse of that was we were asked to send reps to other meetings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We became a group that people mm-hmm. recognised was mm-hmm. quite an important feature of yeah. Washington. And um, I know I was asked to go up to the management team at the galleries that were starting to develop our shopping centre and they wanted to go through the feasibility of having a crash up in the galleries. Mm-hmm. I wish we'd had. Mm-hmm. Yes. At the beginning, it would have been wonderful. Yeah. But it never, ever material. Mm-hmm. Ilsa Martin took one of the development workers. She took me to that one. And Rosemary, you got invited yes. to go to one, and didn't I you? went to the Millennium Centre where everybody... Um, came every month. There was doctors, there was, we had the probation service uh, in Washington, we had councillors, everybody was represented and, and I went as the peer group representative and that's where I met the head of social services in Washington because we had, a, we actually had a social services office in Washington. When, when the new town came, we got everything. You know, things that Washington had nothing when it went before the new town came. When the new, we had uh, we had the council chambers. That that big building behind me, um, that was the council chambers, and that was also a court, ma- the magistrates' court. And, you know, p- uh, you were tried there. That was the first place you went, and then you went to Durham size uh, Durham after that. Um, so we had lots of things when the new town came. Um, a lot of the old people didn't want the new town, but when they found all the things that were happening, they did want the, the, the change completely, you know, taking everything on board. I totally agree because I know from I was in Donwell, as I say, but and all of the others, they brought a new life to the community groups, mm-hmm. to the, um, the halls. Yes. Everything because so many people came in with their kids and things. Mm-hmm. They read all the notices so mm-hmm. quick to start with uh-huh. more and more with all the groups flourished. Yes. And the, as for the development corporation, I know with Ilsa, I went on to do the um, play scheme with them. Mm-hmm. The the toddler groups had started mm-hmm. and they used the same people who set away all, lots of other groups. So yeah. it really was, you mm-hmm. know, sort of a starting point for many, many things. It was, yeah. An important legacy that we, I'm very proud to say we left because we were the first lot of play groups in Washington. And at, at our regular meetings, it became very obvious that we needed to do some training because we were getting lots of volunteers who had no experience at all. Yeah. Um, and with my friend Sheila Arbuckle, who used to mm-hmm. run um, the Albany playgroup, um, and with Janet Pullington, mm-hmm. who yes. was up when, um, within Concord and then possibly Black Fell, we developed a 30-week training course for for workers um, who from who were going to either be running a crash or running a play group or, or helping mm-hmm. out. It didn't have to be ours; it could be anybody's. And at the time, we also had we were beginning to make links with the preschool play groups association, but based in Newcastle, the big yes. headquarters in Newcastle. So we got a lot of their expertise to help us to develop this course. And we, it, we did, and the local authority supported us in the funding of it. And we ran a 30-week course, and do you know, I was so chuffed that it happened. It was absolutely brilliant. It was, it was, and people gained a lot for their own families from it, mm-hmm. their own children, and uh, help. so it was really good. We, we worked closely with the families and the play groups, and we helped with illness and um, family breakups and grief. It was just the things people chatted about as they brought the kids in and everybody wanted to help. It's a lovely atmosphere. We provided a relaxed and that friendly service that was, it was something you were all proud of. Um, parents often pop back. I can remember lots of cases where they, they kept, the kids were screaming because of something that was going on at home. And they, they often used to like put on a show really and they'd have a bit of a tantrum. But um, you knew that once the parents went, 
they often thought, I hope this works. But anyway, they used to convince them if they went, but pop back in a few minutes and see what they were like. And nine times out of ten, it always worked. The kids went back to playing and they were with their mates and they were playing with the bricks and everything. And their parents were quite content. They, you know, we did a lot of good like that. We established really good, strong links with the local schools. So we really helped the teachers who were grateful for the basic skills our kids had gained. Simple, but all essential. Sitting for group stories, which Lynn has mentioned, and um, toilet training. They all knew to ask to go to the toilet and that all of that was all set up and washing your hands and why you washed your hands, why it was important. Um, so, so you hear a lot today about kids not being toilet trained, but ours were all certainly well practiced and it all worked like clockwork, really. So there's a lot of work done in that respect. Um, I always thought we did really well with the toys. We had such a range of toys in all the playgroups. Um, again, it was a little bit competition with that, I suppose. But the kids had expensive toys, toys you couldn't afford to buy. So they would be keen to come to the playgroups because they would have these great big bricks. Can you remember the bricks we used to buy? The kids loved them, but they had expensive slides. They had tunnels and things to climb with the home corner. Um, I always remember one kiddie playing with the iron and we used to have a, a lot of laughs with the kids and watching them. But she had a pile of iron and she put some bits that she wanted to do in this kitty and she had the iron and her iron and boards all set up and she was doing this like oh my back's <laughs> <laughs> you know, completely copying her mum and what her mum must do every time it was hilarious but we encouraged the painting which she mentioned and all the crafts and everything but um we centered around self-development and confidence building and it worked Lastly, the mums gained so much. A lot went on to, to do other jobs in, in childcare, nursery nurses and school assistants and different things. They, they gained confidence from it. Um, they participated all the time. They had the opportunity to be involved as much as they wanted to. They could do as little or as much as they wanted. But they, they shared problems. You often heard people just discussing problems in the corner. A couple of mums who'd had sleepless nights or whatever. And they're discussing behaviour issues and relationships. So they talked to us. And they, they, it was a, a real support network going. Um, there's one thing for sure. And that's it. They were happy days. Often seemed like organised chaos. There's no doubt about that. Um, but people used to muck in and help out and help get the equipment out, as Maureen said. I think that's the only time I remember the dads helping out, which I can never remember one staying, but maybe that's me. But um, there were good times. We looked back on them with a smile, I do, certainly. It was good and something we're all proud of, I think. Um, and uh, it's something really good in, in our backgrounds that we've enjoyed. Fundraising was always... Um, a bit of a an ongoing problem for us all mm -hmm. and um <clears throat> money was tight for everybody but we came up with this idea of giving each of the families a full tube of smarties and what we wanted them to do was to go home and empty that tube <laughs> um and bring it back and i think it was a a shilling mm -hmm. Because that shilling fit the, the size. Mm -hmm. Or was it a threepenny bit? It might have been a threepenny bit that would fit that tube perfectly. And so we asked them, when the tubes were full, could they bring them back? And it was really went down very well and it was surprising how, although it doesn't sound a lot, it was it kept, kept us a little bit of a float to keep going to buy some extra special things that were needed for the playgroup. Hi, it's Joan Britton. Um, just to talk about Bridge and how it started, um, it, was a, it was a thought on some people's heads that women in Washington needed to get more confidence um, and, and do things for themselves because, as the player group have said, um, there was a lot of women here in Washington, in the new town, that didn't have confidence, were stuck at home because they had children, couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't afford the the bus fares to go anywhere to do anything 
<clears throat> and there wasn't that many um, childcare facilities out then. There wasn't that many nurseries around. Um, there was the odd ones in schools, but not, not that many private nurseries. And they couldn't afford them anyway. Um, <clears throat> so in 1985, there was a group of women got together at the Elms um, and came up with the thought of um, a confidence-building course for women. And they applied for and got European Social Fund money. So this was to last three years. So in September of 1986, uh, the first course started in Sulgrave. Um, I don't know what that building was. Was it the community centre? Yes, at I first? think it was. Yeah. Yes, uh-huh. So um, we took over this building, which I presume was a community centre, um, and we had we put on um, a non a confidence building course with non traditional skills, and that was for twenty women. Five, I think it was five days a week, over 10 weeks. And um, at the end of that, these women would leave us and then we would have more people coming in because it didn't happen like that because we'd given them the confidence that they wanted and <laughs> they wanted to go on to do other things. So in our original confidence building course, we did like woodwork classes where we would bring in um, a, a, a woman a joiner and make... Anything, shelves to... Um, and Liz's electrician, didn't you? Well, we didn't have Liz as an electrician then because Liz was on the first confidence building oh, sure. course. All right. Yes. So, uh-huh. <laughs> um, the, I mean, one girl, I remember, she made um, a cross for her father's grave in hardwood. Um, I made a, um, a, a table to go on the end of my dining room table. It had like a gate leg. So I, I, I was very proud of that. Um Anyway, there was that sort of thing. So once the course finished, the women said, you know, we can't stop there. The idea was that we would start another course and do the same things, which because of the European Social Fund money, we had to do that anyway. But then we had to find something else for the other women, the first lot of women to do. Um, And that's when we contacted um, Mungwearmouth College. And we got tutors to actually come out into the community and start to teach um, GCEs, as they were then. Um, So we did uh, maths and English and psychologies. I remember the first people going on on the course for the psychology, and there was that advert on the television, Maureen Lippman doing the the telephone line saying, (laughs) I'm doing an ology. (laughs) And they were over the moon that they were doing it as well. Um, Languages, French, Spanish, that sort of thing. Um, And then, of course, they wanted to go on to do other things. So we then had to start ferrying people into the college. And they did um, bricklaying and paint and decorating, um, engineering, um, car mechanics, the electrician's course, Mm -hmm. lots of things. Um, And as Rosemary pointed out there, one of our first people on the courses, Liz Bannon, um, she went on to the college and did the electrics course and she loved it so much that she actually became a qualified electrician. And years later, once she, became, once she was qualified, she came back and she taught on the courses and uh, looked after her children in, in the creche. I mean, the creches were all free um, and that's why you found that a lot of women would do one course and then they would do another course and then they would do another course because they could get the children into the creche. Um, and sometimes you'd say, I'm sure they're just doing these courses to get the free childcare. But, you know, we then had people who went on to be qualified social workers, um, went on to university. It was lovely to see people coming through university um, with a degree who came on to the first confidence course. Um So we'd started off in Sulgrave, Um, so that was 1986. By 1990, um, we had another building in Albany, I think it was. Um, I think that was the next one. And we were asked by Newcastle University to pilot the first crash workers course. 
so that people who wanted to go on, because um, we needed more crash workers because we were out in the community by then. <laughs> and so we trained our own crash workers to level two, because um, that brings in itself um, different problems because they all had to have criminal records checks. We had to go through social services for the checks through them before Ofsted was around. You know, we had to have the social services inspections. And um, and like you, um, Lily, when you were saying about the structured, in, in your play group, we had structured play in ours. Um, and then we had to bring in the non-traditional skills. So that's when you had to bring in the jigsaws, so that they were, had the men ironing and, you know, the women doing their woodwork and uh, black dolls and white dolls, you know, so the ethnicity came in. Um, I remember putting my grandson in <laughs> when I went to pick him up. She says, Rosemary, he's played with a doll all the time. And I said, Oh, she says, No, that's a sign he's going to be a good father. Oh, <laughs> says, <"That's all> right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it was good to encourage um, the children to play with different things. Um, and we never had boys' toys and girls' toys and, you know, things like that. So from Sawgrave and Albany, um, Albany again was a, a community place that we converted. Um, we went to Chesley Street, um, Durham to start with. It was um, oh, somewhere upstairs in Durham. can't remember exactly where it was now. Um, and then we would um, get community transport to bring people from Durham into Washington we got community transport involved to take people from Washington into the college at um, Wimouth College. Um, and I was the fourth um, female person, female staff member that was employed into the college because they used to pay, you know, my wages via bridge. Um, they didn't, it, the college didn't have um, any women's toilets. You know, so we had to have all of that change, designated women's cho- toilets. and This was um, the college out of Wearside College. Wearside College. In, over in, near the Rolstein and gone in school. Yes. And, and that yes. 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 That one was, it was um, a real male-dominated... Definitely. Yes. Yes. Inside. Because it was all, all for us, non-traditional skills, but for them, traditional skills in the in the mechanics and the electrics and the brickwork and, and what have you. And our women really took to it. And the tutors enjoyed teaching them because they were enthusiastic, you know, and they wanted to do it. They weren't going there because they were told that they had to go, you know, after school or, or whatever. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that was good. So from um, Soulgrave, Albany, Durham, from Durham we moved into Chesley Street, Um in high chair to start with, which wasn't accessible um, for disabled people. Mm-hmm. And then we got the um, the building that used to be the uh, co-op funeral yes. parlour <laughs> behind, behind Front Street. Um, so we took that over. Um, and now, I mean, Bridge is finished now, but there is a, still um, two people who used to work at Bridge they started a very similar project in that building and they've carried that on. So it's, there's still a women's project there um, under the name of Aspire. Um, so anyway, after a few years, we decided the soul grave wasn't big enough for us. So we managed to take over the uh, Columbia Miners Welfare Hall, um, which was quite a big building then, um, but... Even after a year, we decided it wasn't big enough. <laughs> so we managed to get some money. Um, I think it was £250,000 to build another story. So we went up. So during the time that that was being built, um, the staff from there had to move down into Sunderland. And I don't remember the name of the place, but it, it was... It's behind the hospital. Behind the hospital. It's, mm-hmm. it's right on the traffic lights. Like Steel's Pub is. Yes. Yes. Big uh-huh. tall glass yes. building. Yes. Yeah. And, the, and there was lots of um, like youth projects and things mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. And Duke of Edinburgh. Duke of Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. yes. The WEA were there for a while. Yes, well. yes. So, um, so that was good. And then we moved back into Columbia. 
Um, and it, it was excellent in there. And we actually got Princess Anne to come out and do the uh, the cutting of the the ribbon. Mm-hmm. Just, <laughs> so it, we always we were always looking for publicity, and um, yeah, she was lovely. She uh, was. We lovely. were told you couldn't speak to her. You had to wait till she spoke to you. You could answer, but that was all. And um, so I can remember in the hall I had. Um, the, the staff, in, you know, and, and she just forgot about everything. She talked, they talked to her. It was like just talking to your mother. She was lovely, absolutely lovely. She went upstairs in the, um, I remember, in the um, computer room. And one of the women said, wasn't our staff, mate? She said, how do you keep yourself so thin? <laughs> Can you imagine? We were all, you know, <laughs> But she just laughed, didn't you know? Well, you said they all have confidences. Good <laughs> 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 Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> but it was lovely. She was absolutely lovely yeah. you know, with everybody, yeah. you know. So we, we went from um, originally having um, four staff, so that would be um, Sheila Davidson was the administrator, I was the creche worker coordinator. Um, Lynn Carruthers was a um, community worker and uh, Jane Mills again was the community worker. Um, So Jane and Lynn decided that it would be best if they left us after about two years because we knew that the European funding money was going out um, Mm. and that left Sheila and I for 18 months trying to keep this project alive. Um, and we did because we got people on placement and, you know, to do the teaching and, and what have you. And we ended up with over 120 staff. Um, so that that was in nine, in 2012 when we closed down. We had over 120 staff. Um, but over those years, um, we had more than more than 100 volunteers at any one time. And we had to work with them. So we had volunteer coordinators. Um, we did uh, crash workers. I think I had over 100 crash workers at one time. Um, I was doing um, crashes out in the community. So as far out as Ryep, Ryep Community Centre, we had one there. Um, and right across um, Sunderland. So we were running approximately... 25 to 30 sessional crashes every week over the year. Um, so there was lots of crash workers that we needed to train up and mm-hmm. um, get them to play at different places. And do you do you drive a car? Oh yes, you drive a car. <laughs> well, you could go to such and such. And can you pick? Can you pick her up on the way? <laughs> so yes, it was um, it was a very busy place. Um, never had lulls. It was mm. always just constant mm-hmm. um, until we ran out of money. In so when, when did you move to the premises where mine are now? When did you? Move that was that uh, after after you did your building. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the building. All oh, right. That yeah. that is the building. Oh, I didn't yeah. realize you'd gone upstairs. Yeah. Right. Um, so that was about. Um, I think it was about ninety six. We moved into there. And by 99, um, we were having the building changed Mm -hmm. and we moved out and came back. So that would be about 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, so so Bridge, just because of lack of funding, um, we were short of money to get us over the the summer period. And at that time, there wasn't places that you could go to because we'd had, you know, it We'd always been able to say, oh, well, we can get community fund money or mm. we can get money from here or money from there. Um, and then this was just a lull where we just couldn't get another mm. sort of forty or 60,000 that we needed. And we had to close down. Um, so in 2012, um, it was closed down. And then by 20, was it 2013 or 2014, um Washington Mind moved into the building, and it's and they're still there. Um, it's a sad day. It was a very sad day. Um, 
Um, yeah. But there's lots of people, wherever Rosemary and I go, people will go, I know your face. <laughs> and we just, bread, we just say bridge. We're not the bridge women about, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, at one time, um, well, Sheila was given the MBE, um, and she was also... Um, she was an in the college, she was an That's right. And she got coming, you had a big, in the big room, yes. yeah, and we had a party for yes. her, didn't we? And that's when she, that was the day she got an honorary doctorate. An honorary doctorate mm-hmm. um, from Sutherland for, University. For Sutherland University. Mm-hmm. So she would be on the stage when people were going through and getting the, the awards. Mm-hmm. And she, everybody said, oh, here's another bridge woman. Because <laughs> Sheila would be clapping and clapping, you know, and giving them a hug. And <laughs> um, but yes, when, when, um, when you mentioned about the, the hall, we had... There was a hall in um, Columbia, in the Miners' Welfare Hall, um, that had a really lovely sprung dance yes, floor it was a in dance there, floor. Yes. Um, and a little bar in the corner. Uh-huh. Oh yes! Um, and we refurbished the bar, and so at the end of every um, twenty weeks, when we finished the courses, we would have a certificate night. So the people would be invited to the certificate evening yeah. when we'd have a disco and we'd open the bar, and they'd all come down and they'd all get a scroll. When we were in the Soulgrave office, um, this is for Bridge, when we were in the Soulgrave office, um, quite quickly it became um, known that we, that we needed more room. We had a very small office, and once you get four workers and 20 volunteers into a space that wasn't big enough for three people, really, um, we decided that we would try and find out if we could build on. Um, we we didn't get the permission to build on, but we did get the permission to take over the public toilets, which was the men's toilets. Um, and there was a workmen's club next door to us, so that it wasn't popular when we when we took that over. Um, but we did. We broke through that, and that became our office. And it took twenty or thirty coats of paint to stop the graffiti <laughs> from the walls coming through. <laughs> but we did it in the end. Nissan came, the, the, it seemed as though the, Nissan put Washington on the map because um, we often felt overlooked in the Sunland area till, till then. There was an awful lot of money went into bringing Nissan here yeah. and um, it changed, changed the way things were. Really. And Bridge provided a crash um, specifically for the staff from Nissan because they came from Japan. Um, we had that crash in the art centre. And um, we had to, the crash workers had to learn words for, Japanese words for, for car and books and mm. uh, trains. And so they, they, we would speak to the parents and they would tell us what the words were and how to pronounce them, you know, phonetically how to pronounce them. Um, and then we would teach the children the English word for that. So they would go back and tell their parents what the English word was. It was very good at the time. Oh, I, I can remember Ilsa and Marilyn talking to me and telling me, they'd been to a meeting and she, she said, we've just got Nissan coming to Washington. You have no idea the difference it's going to make to this town. And I remember I saying that, them two saying that, yeah. how important it was. Mm-hmm. And they'd just got them yes. to come, you know, so... Um, I mean, you're part of the history, you don't realise, do you? you know, <laughs> I mean, honestly. 